evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Charlie Martin Memorial Stadium at Northeast High School, Cotman and Algon in the northeast section of the city for the 20th annual Daily News Eagles City All-Star Football Game. My name is Ted Soleri, sports writer for the Daily News. With me, Ed DiCabello, athletic director and football coach on sabbatical at St. John Newman High School. Ed, we had a lot of punishment weather-wise for most of the first 19 years of the series. Tonight, it couldn't be better. Yeah, this is about the best day I could remember in 20 years. I think the last time we had a gorgeous day like this was when we uh, had the game at Franklin Field. That was the idea, to move it to May in the hopes of getting better weather. And Last year was reasonably nice, and this year we hit the jackpot, I hope. I don't see a cloud anywhere. At midfield, we have the uh, toss of the coin. The public league team wearing the traditional green with the white trim and the non-public wearing the white. The public league has deferred until the second half. And the non-public now will choose. The non-public will receive at the west end and the publics will kick off from the east. Tom Indigo out of Doherty and number 22 from St. John Indigo's got world-class speed back there. He'll be attending Temple University in the fall. And uh, this could be an exciting play right off the get-go. So we have kicking for the uh, public league. Wardez speaks from German team. The game is played under normal high school rules, National Federation rules, except with the exception of 15-minute quarters to give the players a little more playing time than they would get it under the 12-minute uh, quarter rule. Speaks kicking off. William Potter of Washington makes the signal in. Here we go. We're underway. Tom India at the 20. Straight up the middle. Gets about 10 yards. Hit hard. Straight up by number 60. That's the kicker. Speaks. Pops India at a shoulder level. Sends him to the ground. And it will be first and ten for the non-public league at the 35-yard line. Joe Dizzy from Ryan. The two guards will be Sean McGinty from Cardinal Bakke and Timmy Hart from Father Judge High School. The tackles will be the big tackle Chris Nacco from Ryan and Matt Weber from Ryan. At tight end, we'll have Jamie Henley from Chestnut Hill. The wide receiver will be Carmen Ricardo. And quarterback will be Jeff Sadowski. The fullback, Anthony Sadowski, rolled to his left. Threw downfield and number 43 from Lincoln, Terry Owens breaks it up. I'd like to add that the uh, non-public league offensive front is a pretty big one and will be outweighing the uh, public league by about 10 pounds a man. They average 253 across the front. Non-pubs in the eye. The give to the tailback. Number 27, that is Lance Shaw, his teammate at the prep. He's going to Fordham and he picks up about eight yards. Fullback is one of your kids, Ed, Anthony Sheridan from Newman. Again, the gift to Shaw, first down yardage, and a little bit more. So, non-public successful in its first possession with the first down. Two tight ends in there right now are Bill McVeigh from uh, Ryan and Jamie Henley from Chestnut Hill. Sheridan on the dive. Over midfield. Fourth down by number 27 for the public league is Thomas Fulton from Germantown. After this next play, we'll try to set the public league defense for you. Shaw. Gets the first down and then some. Okay, for the public league, a defensive end, Irving Singler from Washington. At defensive tackle, John Westby from Northeast High. At nose guard, Harry Westcott from Roxborough. At defensive tackle, Marcus Allen from Dobbins. At defensive end, Jonathan Country Perry from Gratz. And the two inside linebackers, Brian Smith from Central and Irving Collins from Germantown. The secondary, at the corner, number 24, Derek Lanier from Franklin. Number 27, Thomas Fulton from Germantown. And strong safety, Charles Schufert from Bartram. And the free safety will be Terry Owens from Lincoln. And on the ground, five consecutive plays. This time we have two receivers to the right. Max Mojica in the slot. So 
Sadowski being pressured. Gets it off underneath to Sheridan. Nice play, Anthony Sheridan makes the catch underneath the coverage. Okay, that was just a, uh, a twins formation out of the eye, and uh, Sadowski ran a waggle pattern. And uh, the original fake to Sheridan, Sheridan went through the line and into the flat. Picks up three yards. Gets the ball off, and Sheridan picks up some extra yards. Number 41, Irvin Sigler. Ed was the guy who almost had Sadowski, couldn't quite get there. The pitch to Shaw off the right side. The ball's loose, but he was down. Back to the double tight. Sheridan up the middle. Nowhere to go. I believe that was number 65. Brian Smith of Central. Got down low. Nice tackle. He's keeping. A lot of room. Into the end zone. Just Sadowski on the keeper to the right side. A lot of room. Pulled his way into the end zone at the very end. That's a touchdown. 10-0-1 left. First quarter. Non-public hits the scoreboard on the 11-yard scoring run by Just Sadowski from St. Joe Prep. Yards this past season. And had a 6.1 rushing average. Jim Sweeney now will attempt the PAT with Walt Bartles holding. Looks good from here, and it is. So Jim Sweeney from Father Judge adds the seventh point of the ball game. And with 10.01 left in the first quarter, the score a non-public seven, public zero. To get that bad weather when teams are limited in what they can do. They did a great job of moving the football up front in a double tight end set. Let's see who we have deep for the public league. In the middle is uh, Derek Lanier from Frankfurt. And then number 27 is Thomas Fulton from Germantown. And that's Omar Barlow with the ball from the 11 yard line. He's a speedster. Oh, he just gets knocked over by number 42. Sean McNesby of Roman. Omar Barlow. Sean McNesby also a baseball star for the Cahillites who are in the Catholic League playoffs. We have a number of double sport guys in the game. We'll mention some of them as we go ahead. Number 11 is your quarterback. I'm sorry, number 18 is your quarterback, Gordon Turner. From Northeast gives the ball to Teddy McLean, and he's thrown backward. See, when he got tackled there, I, I couldn't get a number. It looked like number 54, Brian Cowden from Ryan. They never played together, so here they both are. The pitch out to the left. Number 34 is Charles Schufer. I'm sorry, Lamar Murray from Dobbins. Lamar Murray. Joe Mann had a corner on that play. Did a pretty good job of coming up and forced the play. Kind of lost his footing, but uh, put enough uh, arm on uh, the ball carrier to bring him down. Phillips from West Philadelphia. At left tackle, Sean Baylor from West Philadelphia. At left guard, where Des Speaks from Germantown. The center is Jim Kahn from Masbon. The right guard, Gary Russell from Barcher. The right tackle, Quinton Fuller from Central. The tight end, Dwayne Brown from Masbon. The flanker will be Stephen Lloyd from Masbon. The quarterback, Gordon Turner from Northeast. The fullback, Lamar Murray from Dobbins. And the halfback, Theodore McLean from Franklin. We have a flag down there, Teddy. I didn't have my... Phillips and Stephen Lloyd are wide to the right. Turner rolls that way. Protection from Fuller. Downfield and almost intercepted by number 36, Eugene Small from Roman. The intended receiver was Stephen Lloyd out of Nassau. They were really impressive during the practice sessions uh, leading into the game. So Small's an outstanding player. Also a starter in basketball for the Catholic League Championship team two years in a row. Derek Lanier is the punter. Barlow almost got down there before the ball. He can really run. No return. It's down. The non-pubs will take over in great field position. We'll start exactly on the 45 yard You're listening to Comcast Channel 66. Walt Bartle over the ball. 
The new tailback now is Terrence Mordecai. And the new fullback is number 41, Ray McFall from Ryan. The first play is a pass by Bartle. Dockerty uses the run and shoot offense, does a lot of throwing, so Bartle right off the bat throws. And the receiver over there might not have seen the ball. He's kind of looking into the sun, and he's had that fear and a headlight look on his face, Ed. It looked like there was some confusion on the play. A new fullback. Now they're going to shift out of it now. 41 to fall back at fullback, and Duffy goes to the slot. There's the give to Mordecai. On him quickly for the public league is number 58, Irving Collins from German Tech. So he had to do a lot of that without much blocking, as you know. The run and shoot really spreads things out, and you only have the five linemen for protection. Bartle, by the way, in his career, has passed for under 3,500 yards. Number 55, Jonathan Country Perry with the sack. We're going to see it in a second here. The backside defensive end, the speed of the public thing, always comes into play in passing situations. And we have some confusion for the public league. I guess they're already looked like they had too many people there for a second. Back to punt is Mike Gizzy. Beautiful. Trying to get away is Thomas Fulton. Can't quite do it. Short return. Thirty-five yard punt without the benefit of a bounce, so that's all there. Nice job by Mike Gizzy. Again, Gordon Turner. This time the give is inside to number 30, Teddy McLean from Ben Franklin. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Tackle was made by Chris Henright from the prep. We got a twin set here. Turner again. And number 20, the slot man, Stephen Lloyd, jumped. So the public league having its difficulties in the beginning of the game. Our sponsors for the game tonight, the Philadelphia Daily News, Philadelphia Eagles, the Apex Shoe Company, American Airlines, Gold Metal Splitting Goods, the Bike Equipment Company, and of course, Comcast. Coaching staff tonight. So we thank the Apex Shoe Company for becoming involved with the City All-Star Game. Where's my pair? <laughs> Not for journalists. <laughs> Lamar Murray on the carry. He's going backwards. The last penalty, by the way, was on the defense. Someone went into the neutral zone. So the public league got five free yards, and now they lose two of those. We're under the four-minute mark. I don't know if this is correct, but somewhere I read that Indigo had I'm not sure. Long bomb by Turner, looking for Cameron Phillips. Does he get it? Looks good from here. Cameron Phillips from West Philadelphia on the bomb from Gordon Turner. Nothing fancy about this play. We're watching the replay. He just streaked down the seam and the quarterback just put it out to the 32 yard line. The safety uh, had a little trouble getting over there to give Indigo any help there. He was about a step too slow. Formation to the left. Barlow up the middle. Gets two yards. The three minute mark. Once again, the score first quarter, non public seven. They scored on the first possession, an 11 yard run by the quarterback, Jess Sadowski. His father played, John played for Villanova University and briefly for the Eagles. Jess also headed to Villanova. Let's see how much offense you make, Carlos. So let me call this play, okay? Stephen Lloyd from Massbaum on the reception from Gordon Turner. A little bit of a turnout, at least turnaround, at least on this drive. 
Now we're back on the ground. The give is inside. Dobbins text. Lamar Murray gets a few. Okay, the formation spread wide to the right. Split backfield. And they'll go to the left. The pitch out is to number 25. Ronyel Payton from Overbrook. Headed to Cheney. Payton around the left side. Yeah, he gained over 1,000 yards for a team that had a very bad record and had to throw the ball, so he had a nice accomplishment for the Panthers. This what, what play do you want here, fellas? What play do you want here? It'll be something quick. We want to pitch it. Here we go. It is Peyton blocking from Barlow, and he might have flipped or held flags on the play. It's the play right, but it looks like the or maybe number 20 in the scene across the middle. Stephen Lloyd. It's a flood pattern. The pass was to Stephen Lloyd. But a flag again thrown. Eugene Small broke in front of Lloyd. I didn't notice anything particularly a miss there. Awesome. It didn't look like interference. Eddie Camillo thinks it might have been a lineman downfield. He flew for 46% during the year and 778 yards. Straight back, under pressure, gets away, looking. There are people in the end zone waiting for the ball, but it would have been too hard to get it there. About a yard. And the ball will go over on downs to the non-public lead. And that'll end the first quarter of the game. And they didn't have the same continuity that the first quarter. And the coaches are trying to get as many players in the game as they can. Back to the starters now. Lance Shaw, student body right. Tackled by his counterpart number, Thomas Fulton. <laughs> The new offense, he just carried the ball time to time again. So that's going to happen. Fumble caused by number 55, Jonathan Country Perry from Gratz. We're still not sure who recovered, neither are the referees. We're going to stop the clock. We'll wait and see. No, public league coming out with the ball, number 69 from Roxborough's Harry Westcott. Early in the second quarter, public league with field position. New quarterback from Simon Gratz, number 12, Tito Cobb, one of the best athletes in the public league. Barlow, a quick hitter off the left side. as a corner linebacker. There's a new formation for the Cubs. They're coming out in a trips right. A little run and shoot by the Cubs here. The so lone give is to the fullback. The uh, one back, Rasheen Braddock from Frankfurt. No going there. Tim Carey, one of your guys, that makes the tackle, breaks yeah. through the line. Timmy's got the opportunity tonight to play in his true position as a nose guard. He was forced to play linebacker for him in this past season. Martrell Morris over the ball. Morris, rather, the center from King. Double wide receivers to the right. Lloyd and Phillips. The fake to Braddock. Cobb stumbles. And down he goes. Number 75. Blue quickly. Andrew Dixon. Another one of the double sport athletes. And Tito Cobb has hurt his right knee, it appears. The stumble coming away from the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure whether it happened then or when he finally went down. But he's in a little bit of pain. Big 
Bears this year. Great 
running back. That was a 47 yard touchdown by Jim. And that's the first time in a long time I've seen the public league secondary out there. I don't know what Shaw's true speed is, but he just showed it there. We learned to do Point out of the hole of Walt Barton. It's good from here, and it is. And that'll make the score non public league 14 and the public league 0. With 7.15 remaining in the second 51 seconds, with Shaw carrying twice for 55 yards, and of course the big one was the 47 yard touchdown after a fine, fine block by the insurance. It's funny, I showed the show in the locker room before we came out tonight. I said, Anthony, tonight you may have to block a little bit instead of carrying the ball. And he said, don't worry, I'm ready to block. And he did a great job that time. So uh, Sean can pat Sheridan on the back for springing him on that long touchdown. Sweeney to kick off. It's deep in the middle to Derek Lanier. Wiggles from Frankfurt at the 14. The ball's loose. It's loose. Man scramble. We'll untangle it in a minute. Public League gets it back. The two quarterbacks, Tito Cobb is hurt. He's out. He's still sitting on the sideline. So Gordon Turner has to go it alone here. Barlow inside. Much there. Bottom of the pile, Timmy Carey, number 77 from St. John Newman, and they look like number 67, John James from Cardinal Box. <laughs> <laughs> Under five and a half minutes. Turner retreats. Long. Interception? No. Andre Dixon. I believe that's who it was. We'll check. The Cubs will have to put here. Again, it'll be Derek Lanier from that's a spiral. Did that touch somebody on the way through? That looked like it might have hit number 34. That's good on the way through, but no one else seemed to see it. Five-yard punt by Wiggles, Derek Lanier. There's Bartle, perfect to Ricardo. He tries to shake the defender with number 43, Terry Owens. Can't do it. What a short game. While completing 61%, 12 touchdowns. Now the gift to his teammate, Mordecai. Hello. In the middle, number 74 is Marcus Allen from Dobbins. that one, no one to throw it to. The closest person in the area was number 22 from Bartram Charles Schufert. You don't put a body on them coming off the line of scrimmage. They're in. A lot of excitement, but he wound up going backwards. On the play, one of the fellows in on attack that was number 13, Rick Rosati, which he uh, comes from the long line of all star. Richie had two brothers, his only brother Ronnie and uh, Joe, who both played in all star games uh, prior to this one. So he's the third Rosati that's taken the field as an all star. Uh, 
St. John Hill. Clipping is the call. Three minutes remaining until the half. Public League looking to create some offense. In the hole, 14 nothing. Here's the pitch to Peyton. Needed a block on the corner, couldn't get it. And he's met by two defenders, Ken Metzger, number 34. And number 21 is Joe Meehan, the pair of Judge Crusaders. In motion, Theodore Fairfax, number 88. Inside some room, briefly for Murray. Metzger again got through there, though, put a body on him, coming off the line of scrimmage. Down goes Murray. Again, the timeout by the non-publics. 2.29 left in the head. The clip earlier, by the way, was ruled a dead ball foul. So the public league has third and 15. Turner in trouble. Gail Hudgens from Dockerty breaks through. Well, he's going to have to get it together because, as we mentioned, he's going to be the only QB. Unless Tito Cobb makes a recovery of some kind. Or... Derek Lanier has about three yards to work with there. Backed up into the end zone. He'll be the punter. Gets it off nicely. But Indio is going to have a chance at a return from the 41. The bake, the shake, along the right sideline. Tackled out of bounds by Jim Kahn again. Gets downfield in a hurry. Tackle Indigo goes a lot further down that side. The non-pubs will take over in great field position in the 30 yard line. Sadowski can throw it underneath right now easily. He does. That's Max Mohica from Cardinal Dockerty with the reception. Lanier on the tackle. Non-pubs down to about the 17 yard line. Duffy coming into the ball game. He's 200 pounds and he's got great speed. He finds the hole. He's tough to bring down. There's a waggle here. Baskin getting pressure. He gets rid of the ball. Throws it up for grabs and it looks like he had an interception in the end zone. Looks like number 10. Green Barnes from Franklin. Where's one of your kids? Dante Barnes. Real good quarterback. Option quarterback. Of the Good job. He's the director of the game. Excellent job. He's getting bigger and better every year. Thanks, man. I'm glad you stopped in, Vincent. But believe me, the public needs to be this year. Gordon Turner on the rollout. Hits Stephen Lloyd from Mass Bomb. So a little bit of offense for the club. I'm not sure they realized it. They lost, lost a lot of ticks on the clock here. Yeah, no urgency. 45 seconds left in the half. And they choose to run motion and use more time. Turner with Mike Gizzi on his trail. Beats him, but he has to go out of bounds because number 42, Sean McNesby, was ready to plant him. Millhouse headed to Ohio University. Inside handle. But Turner can do the job. He has a nice arm and decent enough feet to get himself clear. But when you're losing by 14, the you know, defensive line can tee off a little bit, and that makes things difficult. Now Turner now with the quick pass to Lloyd. Or, sorry, that's Cameron Phillips from West Philly. Met by number 21, Joe Meehan and Judge. Yes, number 54, Brian
Are we ready to go, guys? throughout the decade of the 1970s at Frankfurt High as designated by the Daily News and an outstanding career at West Virginia as a receiver. Derek Lanier, the brother of Darrell Miller. So Jim Sweeney set the kick off. And deep for the public league, Derek Lanier, Thomas Fulton, and Omar Barlow. On the 10, it's Barlow. Waiting for him is number 21. He is blocked. That is... Joe Meehan looking to make his seventh tackle of the game. It doesn't happen. Barlow with a nice return after about the 37 yard line. Yeah, he was brought down from behind by number 80, Andre Dixon, who has great speed out of Chestnut Hill Academy. The non Cubs look like they're back to their starting lineup on defense. Tito Cobb, one of the best football athletes in the public league, and he's done for the night. Turner in the pitch to Rondell Payton from Overbrook. Out in front of him was number 84, Dwayne Brown from Mass Bomb. And the short pickup for Payton. Little double tight end, split uh, wide receiver to the left. Payton and Murray. He gave a game to Payton. Almost lost the ball. Down by most of the tacklers there, and he'll be short of the first down, but he'll bring up a third and about a long yard and a half. Again, they're going to come out with a double tight end. Wide receiver to the right, he'll go in motion, number 20, Stephen Lloyd. Peyton, short side of the field, can he turn it? Yes, he does. Now it's a foot race with the angle and not getting him as mean of judge. Ryan Yell Peyton into the end zone. 55 yard touchdown to the short side of the field. Public League is back in the ball game. I think they established the run on that play, Teddy. <laughs> How about the uh, dash? But un unfortunately for the non public league team, Eugene Small came up on a bad angle. You're going to see it here on the. As we mentioned, Overbrook did not have that good of a team, and he had trouble getting loose sometimes, but every once in a while, he really broke a long one. Clubs choose to go for the one-point conversion. Or it does speed is, is the kicker. Number 60. That last run uh, was 64 yards. He turned uh, those shoulder pads uh, North south and off he went because he just he just stayed on that sideline. He hugged the sideline all the way down. Short the kick, kick will be taken by McNesby on the return from the 26. And Jonathan Country Perry bear hugs him to the ground. We got a flag thrown there on the sidelines. Let's see what we have. Looked like it was after the play. Bardo will start the second half offensively at quarterback. Yeah, McVeigh and uh, Mordecai in the back there. Mordecai, tailback, squirts through, and gets about three or four yards. He's second in about five here. Sheridan is the fullback. Mordecai, the correction, Ray McFall was the fullback on the play. McFall, uh, McFall had a great block there on a the defensive end, but Mordecai uh, chose to cut back and found himself. Off 
side. Jumping across, I believe, is Lydell Davis from George Washington. And it's dissipating slowly but surely as the non-public comes back. Bartle to his favorite receiver, Dockerty, Max Mojica. Now the ball might be loose underneath that pile, plus a flag was thrown in. Nothing fancy about that play, just a two-step drop, turn, and hit Mojica on a slant in, and he picked up some 12-yard line. Give Mojica 16 on the catch, 12 more on the penalty, and it's first and, the first and 10 at the 12. Now it's Mordecai, Colonel Dockerty, dominant here. The pass to Mojica, then to give to Mordecai. And he gains about five. Three. Left tackle, or left guard, rather. That well, must not be the right number. There is no 73 in here. 76. That is Max Belfast from Newman. Short track. Left tackle from McVay. McFall, I'm sorry. Picked up some... Uh, Guardage there right in the middle. And it'll bring up a uh, second down. Ball at the four. Walt Bartle sets the offense. Mordecai. Met. Derek Lanier, number 24, came in hard off the corner. The 22 yarder. The holder will be Walt Bartle. So we might look for a fake. Let's see. Jim Sweeney hammers it. Looks to be good. And it is. So Jim Sweeney, a father judge, buries the 22-yard field goal. We have 8.23 remaining in the third quarter. And the score, non-public 17, the public 6. You see after scoring a touchdown. Jim Sweeney again. Rip kick off. Barlow at the seven. Let's see. A little bit of room and down he goes. Andre Dixon quickly downfield. Andre Dixon's having a pretty good game uh, defensively. Khan from that ball. Over center. Hayton and Murray in the backfield. It'll be Peyton to the short side, looking for room, cuts back, and salvages about a three-yard game. play started out, it was cut off real quick by the defensive end, forced him to cut back, and Huggins was there. Some great backside pursuit, and limited the ball down to a two-yard game. So he second and eight here. Cubs have chosen to try to run this football team. That's the only time they've had any success. Again, double tight end, spread to the right. Peyton again. Almost squirted through. Cameron Phillips in. As one wide receiver, and to the other side, Stephen Lloyd. And downfield, they're going to go. Turner to Phillips. Makes the catch. No. Incomplete. Not a real bad throw there by Turner. He pumps a lot of confirmation. Derek Lanier. Back for the non-pub. Carmen Accardo and Tom Indio. Indio hits it on the 37. Oh, good morning. Number 20. Stephen Lloyd hits Tom Indio just about as he received the ball. Flags are down. Away from the play, but we'll wait to see what the officials have Clipping. So a big penalty against the non pubs 66 and the 20th annual. Daily News Eagles City All-Star Football Game. And Shaw. He's hit. He comes in and really polishes it. Looks like number 
65 and uh, some holes, but that time it just didn't work. Second and 14, we'll call it officially. Sadowski with the keeper to his right. Chased by Davis. He won't get him. Terry Owens finally knocks him out of bounds. Almost there. It's a big first down for the now public on the team. Sadowski back over the ball quickly. Shaw. And a holding penalty at the line. That'll come back. Usually that's what that means when the, ref, the umpire tosses it into the pile from a little bit downfield. Mojica and Accardo. The give instead to Shaw on the draw. A little bit of room. Number 65, Brian Davis, or Brian Smith, rather, from Central. This kid's a great passer, and he really hasn't had the opportunity to show what he's got. Kowalski, he throws it downfield, though. Number 46, Jamie Henley from Chestnut Hill Academy on the reception. Not enough for the first down, but definitely improves the field position. A little opening and just sits there. Picks up some nice yardage. Going to be short of the first down. Sadowski's going to keep to his left. Can't turn the corner. 22 and 27 on the tackle for the club. Charles Shuford and Thomas Fulton. Back on the offensive side of the football. Derek Lanier. Single safety. Good snap. A real good kick. Lanier on the 13. Flying for the sideline. Tom Indio down quickly. Makes the initial contact. And Lanier goes down. 240 left, third quarter. 17 to 6 is your score. Non public on top. Turner inside. Number 30, Teddy McLean from Ben Franklin. Brought down by number 14, which is six, a favorite of non-public league squad. Same play again. Okay. Got a half a step away from breaking that. Peyton now. Is the partner for McLean. McLean leads the way. Peyton spins, tries for extra yardage, and will actually wind up losing. So the non public successful on the defensive stand. Uh, Sean McNesby, uh, he really wasn't the guy to bring down the ball carrier, but he forced that play real quickly and stacked it up for the game. Bubs will have to turn it over. And once again, the non pub should be in a great field position as the third quarter comes to the third. Tom Indio, Carmen Accardo, the return man. Lanier gets it away cleanly. Good carry on that ball, and Indio has to let it bounce. And it hit no one, I guess, because Stephen Lloyd bounds it without any problem. And the ball at the 46 yard line of the non public, so it'll be first to Bartle back at the controls. See if they get this play off. The clock runs on the change of possession. And they do get it off. And there's Mojica. Thomas Fulton with the tackle. And that'll end the third quarter as the short pass to Max Mojica is complete from his Doherty teammate, Walt Bartle. Pickup of six yards on the play. So at the end of three, your score, the non-public 17, the public league six. Inside handoff to the fullback. Ray McFall, but a flag is thrown. They might have had a, an illegal shift or procedure. 
three jokes, three Donnellys, and the back jokes, and his three. Bartle's going to throw it. Maybe not. Jonathan Country Perry, we've seen him before on the sack. We're going to see Perry here on the replay. Gains his feet, makes a great tackle, and Bartle goes down for a loss of about four. Country Perry not committed. I believe he's going to be talking to some college coaches after this one. If they're not here in person, they'll get the film. Interception, number 27, Thomas Fulton at his own 40. And over midfield. Oh, wow. yeah, okay. Calling out the winner. One thing I know for sure wasn't me, so who cares who won? <laughs> All right, back to football. Jordan Turner over the ball. Barlow behind him. There he goes. I'm sorry, that's Rasheen Braddock from Frankfurt. And a nice run. Dale Hudgens on the tackle. Braddock breaks one for about close to 10 yards. Braddock ran for 882 yards on the season, along with 12 touchdowns. Oh, oh, almost. Teddy McLean again at the almost stage. Take a 10 to 9 lead in the series. And there has been one tie. Again, Radock. Nice bottom half line. Bottom half bomb players along that line, number 61. Chandler Dunbar, number 84. The tight end is Dwayne Brown, also from Mass Bomb. Turner gets heat and burn. Number 58, Joe Cannon from Father Joe. The nature of one of his receivers to break over. But he takes off running and running his belt. He got a trick formation to the right. Going back again and gets heat quickly, but it's a screen pass. Lamar Murray from Dobbins. Doesn't go, doesn't go, doesn't go very far. It's Tim Keery, the nose guard from St. John Moon. Does a great job of smelling that play out. Approaching the 10 minute mark. Let's come out here again. Got to slot it away. Again, pressure. Gets away. Does he get the first down? No. Jesse Mercer was Ed Carvey. But made four or five people missing and a little bit of a show here. And the non pubs will take over on downs, and we got Sadowski back over the ball. Shaw. Again, trying to pick his way, but he'll get no yardage here at the public league. Puts up the stone wall. Blair Thomas back in the house. Sadowski, the give, to Shaw on the draw, and he's waffled by number 75, Bill Dolan from Northeast. So, all right, Blair, let's be an offensive coordinator here. It's uh, third and long, what are you calling? And you're not giving the ball to yourself, I hope. Uh, at the high school level, you need some kind of waggle. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that coming. What a cheater. And there it is. You're fired, it was intercepted. <laughs> intercepted by Terry Owens of Abraham Lincoln. What well, a prank for Steve Bob. So Terry Owens from Lincoln with the interception. Just under the eight minute mark. Gordon Turner gives to Peyton. A little bit of blocking, but not enough. Oh, yeah, so up in Blair, no cheering in the press box here. I know you're a public league guy. No, that's all right. <laughs> Sean McNesby breaks through from Roman. Makes the tackle. All the way to the uh, 35 and 4. I don't think they need to go for it all at once. 
I say a uh, pitch out to the right. And he's rolling right is Turner. A lot of time. Makes the pass. It's caught by number 20, Stephen Lloyd from Mass Farm. So Turner got time on that play. Where we'll let you handle the replay when it comes up here a moment. That's the public league for the moment, although there does seem to be some confusion. The preliminary signal was unsportsmanlike conduct, and I'm not sure whether it was a dead ball foul, live ball foul. Some of this stuff gets pretty tricky. Now, I think what happened was the penalty was against the non-public and was longer than the original play. So they will take the penalty, 15-yard gain. And that is the call. When I played this game, we were uh, really focused on how many yards we had and uh, how many plays we got a chance to play. Turner now to his right. Again, the tie. Sneaks it in there. Stephen Lloyd, beautiful catch. Oh, it's Cameron Phillips. Oh, touchdown! Cameron Phillips sneaks in between the covers. Gordon Turner threads the needle. Phillips takes it the rest of the way into the end zone. Blair, thanks. Ed DeCamillo is going to hop back in here and when we get the, uh, the replay. 18 13. Let's see if the Cubs will. It should be 12. The scoreboard had 13, but of course the public league missed the kick the first time around. Cubs should be going for two here. They asked to have the ball put on the left hash mark. Come out in a double tight end and a power eye set. First time we've seen this tonight. Turner wide open in the end zone. And Turner slips and can't get it to him. Wide open. They should have been blown dead as Turner's knee hit the ground. Irvin Sigler was standing there by himself. Didn't look like we had any uh, indication from the official who uh, threw the play dead here, but Turner's knees bumps come back out with the uh, first unit that they started the ball game with. They haven't seen Sheridan for a long while. He seemed to have a couple of nice plays early in the game, and then you have to see very little of it. The card on the return. At the 15, Jonathan Perry among the greeters. Perry's having a real fine game. Like you said earlier, he's not committed to any school, but I'm sure he's opened a few eyes here tonight. On the other side is Urban Sigler. Sadowski gives to Shaw. And a pickup of about five. Shaw spins. Can't get away from Perry, though. He eluded the first tackler, would be tackler, Brian Smith. Then Jonathan Country Perry. He's lived all over the world. His stepfather, a career serviceman. Italy, Germany, a number of places in this country. Makes the tackle. A good field position to uh, try to do something to win this ball game. Quarterback sneak. Sadowski gets it with no problem. Picks up about four yards, in fact. An interesting scenario with the quarterback and the tailback, Sadowski and Shaw. Their school, St. Joe Prep, of course, is inside the city limits, but both live outside the city, so. They probably don't know some of these guys very well, but they're showing the city a little bit of football savvy to know that. I have to, I have to go around back. These are my recommendations for defense. Curry and McNesby. I don't know who Blair's going to say. Uh, Brock and some of the other guys aside. Grant Shaw, again, the ball carrier. The play, I guess we'd have to say, for the moment. Reception made across the middle. Nice throw, really a nice throw. Put it right on the money and a big first down for the non-public league squad. Max Mojica. starting to come loose there as he got hit in the middle of the line of scrimmage and the, the pub tackle is starting to 
scratch and crawl at the ball, trying to force the fumble, but Lance held on. Second and nine. Kowalski over the ball. Double tight end again. Takes him to the line. Kowalski is off the line. That play has been a good play to the uh, non cut off. That's all Michael. Shortly we'll be giving you uh, the game MVPs. Sadowski mishandled. And the public league calls time for the booth along the square time, so we'll be doing the picking. 2 12 in the ballgame. Ray McFall gets an infrequent carry, gets about five yards out of it. At the defensive end, Jonathan Country Perry from Gratz. He has lived in the non-public backfield most of the evening, has five sacks and a number of other tackles. And for the non-public, we're going to go with Sean McNesby from Roman Catholic, the linebacker, number 42, in on nine tackles thus far. Offense, we're still a little unsure. Some strong candidates, Lance Shaw from the prep, Josh Sadowski, the quarterback from the prep, and for the public league, you have number 18, Gordon Turner, the quarterback has had a decent evening. And the receivers, Stephen Lloyd and Cameron Phillips, both have had some catches. And of course, the long touchdown run. Here you see Sean McNesby on the sideline, speaking with a non-public teammate, Brian Calvin. They're neighbors, they don't go to school together. Sean lives in Ryan's area, though, as does Calvin, of course, who plays for Ryan. Sadowski, the keeper, he's going left, can't turn the corner, Terry Owens from Lincoln, who's also had a nice game, up to make the tackle. Sadowski had the right idea, he's taking off around the end, eating up a lot of clock, but he's got to stay in bounds if he wants to uh, kill the pubs right here. Instead, he uh, got knocked out of bounds and it stopped the clock, but it's a close down. Touch up to do here is run a couple quarterback sneaks, Teddy, and uh, game number 20 will be history. Choose the hand off the shot. Picks up about a yard. The public on offense is the quarterback, Jess Sadowski. Besides the running ability, he's completed some passes. And it's his ability on the option, on the rollouts, that uh, has enabled the non-public to freeze defenders. And yes, it is. Number 25, Jess Sadowski, is the MVP for the non-public quarterback from St. Joe Prep. And he's headed to Villanova, say, in case something happens down here towards the end. As we mentioned, there are some, some strong candidates. On statistics for tonight, tonight, Kevin Cooney. The pride of Father Judge High, Tom McKenna, Daily News leg man, known throughout the city, hockey, head fakes, stat man, nut man, all kinds of names. Involved, non-public, looking to add, in addition to winding down the clock. Sadowski gives inside. Again, that was Shaw. 34 ticks of the clock. Now. The referee with Coach winds the clock. 25 seconds remaining. Let's see here, Sebastian just takes the knee. That'll bring to a close the 20 pound of the city all star. Shaw looking for the end zone. Gets it. Lance Shaw scores with five seconds remaining on a seven-yard run. Insult to injury. The touchdown. A lot of booze here in the crowd after that call. I believe everybody in the ballpark thought that they would uh, sit on the lead and uh, run 
run the quarterback sneak, but Shaw takes the ball into the end zone and picks up his second touchdown of the year. 23 to 12. Now the score. Sweeney trots out on the field to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of the quarterback to that bottom. Kick, no good. Jim Sweeney hooks the ball slightly to the left. Oh, that. You got that. Philadelphia, number 21, the wide receiver who had a couple of nifty catches out there tonight for the public league. So Cameron Phillips is our offensive MVP for the public league squad. He scored on a 37-yard touchdown reception from Gordon Turner. There's Cameron re ready to return this final kickoff of the game. And earlier in the game, also had a long reception, good for 39 yards. The kick, kickoff, it will be Phillips. One last chance with the ball from the 17. Looking for room. And down he goes. So Cameron Phillips on the return, gains seven to end it. From Northeast High, the final score in the 20th annual Daily News Eagles City All-Star Football Game is the non-public 23, the public league 12. Ed, some final thoughts? Well, it was a very well-played game, and uh, both teams, uh, like in the past, played hard. But I think the uh, early offense of the non-public league squad uh, was the key here. They jumped out in front with a 14-point lead, and uh, the public recovered from that and great defense on both sides of the ball uh, i can't say enough about these kids they did a great job uh, they performed well they only had 10 practices it was really an error free ball game except for the one drive where we had a couple of 15 yard penalties and the bottom line is it was a well played game and the kids played with a lot of class and uh, that's all we could ask i mean they did a great job you've got a lot of kids out there who uh, are playing with guys that they uh, banged heads against all year long and did a great great job and uh, believe me once again the kids in the city prove that uh, they're fine football players today okay that'll do it from northeast ed camilla thank you my name is ted Soleri. the final score again 23 to 12 favor of the non-public good night and thanks for watching Tape a couple times. No. I didn't think it made a difference with Shaw scoring at the end. So no. made some key plays.